something today that's very vital. Um, there's a scripture that says, if you neglect what I'm talking about, how can you escape? So that means if you don't understand this, um, sometimes you can be provoking and don't know it. And you can hinder your blessings and hinder your miracles, hinder your breakthroughs. So today, um, look at um, um, Matthew 26, Matthew 26 and 51. I never heard nobody say this and preach this before, but you know, hey, just because nobody ain't preach it don't mean God didn't give it to me. Amen. Amen. <laughs> How many know God can speak to you? Amen. Amen. Um, I'm, I'm talking about a certain type of class of angels today. Look at somebody said miracle angels. Yeah. Oh, to God. How many ready for some miracle angels to show up? You know what? Um, here's, here's an example. Look at Jesus in Matthew 26. It says, and behold, one of them which were with Jesus, 51, and says, um, stretched out his hand and drew his sword. <coughs> Spoke a servant of the high priest and smoked um, off his ear. So we know that it was Peter took out the sword and spoke off one of this um, guy's ear because he was trying to arrest his master Jesus. Amen. And look what Jesus said to him. Put up again that sword into this place. For all that, that take the sword shall perish with the sword. In other words, um, I know you want to do it physically and in the flesh, but what I'm dealing with in the spirit. In other words, there are things in the spirit realm that's going on that I can call and we don't even have to worry about the natural because the spirit can back me up. Because Jesus said it like this, thinkest thou that I cannot pray right now to my father and he shall presently give me more than 12 legions of angels. In other words, I act legions of angels. Legion is a military term. Back there, it was mean six uh, legion, like uh, legion, one legion was 6,000 men. So he was saying angels um, are legions. He said 12 legions. So 12 legions is at least 72, at least 72,000 angels. At least seven, Jesus said, I can call, I can pray right now to my father and he'll send me at least 12 legions of 72,000 angels to show up and do something mighty. Yeah. Glory to God. In other words, if now, here, here's what I'm going to say. If Jesus said that, then how many know if we are heir of God and joint heir of Christ, then not only Jesus has the authority over the angelic realm, but how many know we can pray and God can send the angels our way? Yeah. But here's the problem about us. We sometimes don't even believe in angels. We sometimes don't believe. We only believe what we can see. But I, I got I to give you some faith to let you know behind the scene, angels are doing more than what you even thought. Matter of fact, no one would be here today if angels didn't intervene and show up and got you here. Amen. Before you got saved, it was a God and angel around you every day from a child all the way up to now. The devil, if he had his way, he'd have killed you before you got saved. But he couldn't kill you. Why? Because angels are around you, protecting you and guarding you and bringing you to the day. Look at somebody say, I thank God for my angels. For my angels. Amen. Jesus said 72,000. Can you imagine all these angels sitting around chilling, ain't doing nothing? Can you imagine there are angels that protect us, but there are some things that if we don't do as believers, we can't call, we don't give them assignment. Sometimes they can't do what else they need to do. Yeah, they're protecting you, but, I, but some of us need to go get our stuff. Yeah, they watching over you, but some of us need a miracle. Yeah, yeah they watching over you, but somebody need to get out of debt by next week. Yeah, yeah they watching over you, but somebody need your child saved. Yeah. Uh, see, 
angel said, I just don't want to take care of you and watch over you. I want you to give me an assignment so I can go in and accomplish what you can't do in the natural. The Lord woke me up um, yesterday and told me it's like that in the natural. It, the angels of God are like Navy SEALs. If you know anything about Navy SEALs in the, in the military, they go in and clean house and take care of business, amen, setting the, the way for the rest of the uh, branches to come in and do something. And when the Navy SEALs go in there, they don't sit around, chill, and talk. They in and they out. Well, that's how the angels are in your life. They in and they out. They're showing up with the healing, they're going back. They're showing up with your deliverance, they're going back. They're getting you out of debt, they're going back. In the spirit realm, the angels of God are set up for assignment to go in and change and rearrange things in your life for the good and come out of their assignment. That's the way we got to start thinking. And you know what? And I don't think we just, uh, if, we, if we knew this and understand this, we would be so confident. But we don't really know, so I got to talk about it. Praise God. Look at somebody say miracle angels. Miracle angels. Now, now, where do you get that from, miracle angels? Go over there to Ephesians 1, 7. Look at this. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord told me, you know, something that y'all can get excited about. There's a dunamis miracle angel in here. Glory to God. He's always been with us. And he's ready to do work. Amen. Amen. Look what it says here in Ephesians 1. Ephesians 1, 17. Uh, Ephesians talks about something here. This is um, Paul wanted us to get a revelation of who the Lord is and what the, what the Lord he has in our lives as believers. And look what it says here. If we go down, we can go down some. Verse 19 said, what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ, when he raised him from the dead, set him at his own right hand in the heavenly place. And then check this out. Talking about Jesus, he, he raised him from the dead. How many believe that? And he set him at his own right hand, where? In the heavenly places. Now check, what, check out the next verse, verse 21. Far above what? All principalities and powers and might and dominion and every name that's named, not only in this world, but also that is to, which is to come, verse 22, and has put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth. Now, check this out. What is, that, what is all that saying? It says Jesus was raised from the dead, set at the right hand of God the Father. This word right here where it says, far above all principalities and powers and meaning the might, Satan has copied everything from God. So, you know over there in Ephesians where it says, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in the high places. Those are demons. Those are fallen angels. Amen. How many know that there's a devil out there? And he has his rank set up so strategically that, you know, principalities have a job, powers have a job, rulers of dollars have a job. But right here, we're not reading about demonic angels. This is godly angels. God said, Jesus said, he above all principality, all power, all might. See, principalities, angels of principalities of God, it's God and angels that, you know, they're God over cities and nations and rulers, you know, and the powers, they, are, they keep the universe, um, you know, uh, in other words, they, they, they execute assignments and go out and fight evil spirits. That's what powers are, the angels of God. But also it says might. Also it says might. This word might in the Greek means virtue, means dunamis. Might equals dunamis. The root word and the Greek word is dunamis, which means miracle working power. So there are an angel called might. There's an angel called virtue. Look at somebody say, I have some virtue angels. <laughs> In other words, is the angels that do specific miracles. My 
God. So in other words, he said he has authority over all the principalities, all power, all might, all dominion. Dominion, they rule over other angels and can't make sure that they carry out their commands. In other words, so what I'm focusing on is this might angel, this dunamis angel, this angel that'll show up and cause miracles to happen without you being touched. Amen. Oh, Lord. These angels showing up and getting you out of your situation supernatural. What is a miracle? A supernatural intervention from God. Amen. Unusual and extraordinary miracles can begin to show up with God's angels. There are a lot of angels, and they do, had a lot of responsibilities and a lot of things they do, but here's what I'm talking about. I'm going to release the miracle angel in here today to get up and, out of, and start assignment because he's glad I'm talking about this because whenever you talk about it, he's able to get an assignment and go do something. So I don't know what you was in before you came up in here, but you better say bye-bye to that. Sit way your troubles away because when this angel show up, he'll begin to do things that you can't do supernaturally. Amen. Amen. So you got to understand that. In other words, here's the part I'm so excited about because if you keep reading, it says, who have put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head of all things to the church, which is his body. So Jesus said, not only can I pray and angels are subject to me, but now you are the body. I gave this to the church. You have the same authority that I have. You can speak to the mountain and the mountain got to get out the way. You can call forth and, and whatever, whatever you're calling got to come. You have authority as the church, as the body of Christ. Jesus said, I have authority. And I said, Lazarus, come forth. But you can speak to the dead and say, Lazarus, come forth. So in other words, when you do that, you're not the angel. You're not doing it. You're just taking a command and authority. And when you do with the revelation of what you're doing, the angels get up and go do what it is you need them to do. Like Navy SEALs, their clean house and come back and try to find out what's the next assignment. Amen. Glory be to God. And you know these angels are real. And the Bible in, in Hebrews 13 said, you know, don't, don't, don't um, be unaware. Don't, don't, uh, you, you might be entertaining strangers or angels unaware. Angels can turn into a man. Some of you might have been dealing with angels sometimes you don't even know it. Amen. Amen. Ain't no, I heard Kenneth Copeland say on YouTube, he said about these angels, he said that one of his friends had heart trouble. Doctors gave him up because his heart was not beating right. And he wasn't operating. He didn't give him long to live because his heart was failing. He went home. He was a believer, kept believing God, kept speaking the word, kept praying, kept standing on the word. How many know when you're in faith, faith activates your angels? So he was asleep, amen, one night, and all of a sudden he thought he was dreaming. He thought it was a vision, but he woke up and saw a man with his hand inside his heart. He saw a man with his hand, hand went inside his chest and was in his heart, besides in his heart. He thought it was a dream, and then the, he said, the man said, go ahead and go back to sleep. I got this. So he thought, well, you know, that do feel good. Let me go and see. He thought he was dreaming. So in the morning, he woke up totally healed. Went to the doctor, couldn't find nothing wrong with his heart. What happened? It was a miracle angel showed up. Oh, y'all, y'all ain't ready. Angels are real. They can manifest. In the Old Testament, they manifest all the time. You know, Joshua, was, they were getting ready to fight. He showed up, and Joshua saw a man, a war, a big man. He said, whoa, with a sword. He said, are you with us? Or are you with them? Because <laughs> sometimes, you don't want to go around talking about, Lord, show me an angel. You really don't want to see one. Because it scared you half to death. I don't, you don't want to be going around asking for angels because sometimes you open up yourself to the demonic because the angel, the devil can show you something. But you just got to be ready to believe that angels exist. I can't believe in something I can't see. What am I actually did? Do you have any brains? Can you see them? (laughs) 
So, in other words, we're talking about these things, and I need to talk about it because once I talk about it, faith comes by hearing. Amen? And so let me get back up here because these angels are real. And so we're talking about virtue. This might means virtue. So there are virtues of angels. It's in the class rank of the hierarchy of God. You know, there are, there are really nine of them. And I'm going to get to one. It's cerebrums, there are uh, cherubims, there are thrones, there are dominions, virtues, powers, principalities, archangels, and angels. All of them are angels. Everybody got different jobs, but I'm talking about these virtues. I'm talking about the angels. They call it the angels of grace who bring God's blessings and miracles to the earth. They are called power and strength angels of, of God. Oh, my God. In other words, I like that. It says they're like shining ones. They're like, you know, they are, um, some people look kind of scared. <laughs> Say, well, he's he, he talking about angels. <laughs> angels are real. If you don't believe that, then you, 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 uh, you in deception. How do you believe the devil real, but you don't believe God real? The devil talking to me. Yeah, but can God talk to you? Amen. Hey, God, God is real. Amen. We're going to give you all these scriptures so you'll know. Amen. But praise God, we need to understand that. They're like light. They're shining light. The order of angels are called angels of miracles, encouragement, and blessing. They are the chief bestowers of grace and valor. In other words, they, they're called courage to come. They're called boldness to come. They are awesome angels. Amen. And sometimes we just need to put them to work. Sometimes you done done all you can. Yet all you need is God's angels to show up one day. May, my God, the Bible says that one angel, one angel uh, killed over 185 men in one night. The angel, one angel. And you have 72,000. Amen. Angels can go with you. Amen. Some of us need angels to go wherever we go. How many know wherever you go, the angels are going? Amen. Somebody said, well, what if I go to the club? Is he going to wait outside? Mm-mm. <laughs> he's going right up in there. Amen. Because <laughs> he's there to protect you. Amen. So you got to understand that. So we understand this. And we understand this. So now I got to get into um, just validating what I said. Um, got a couple of scriptures, then we, we'll, we'll let you go. Amen. But um, angels... Um, what are the angels' daily primary job for our lives? Amen. Look at Psalms 91. Look at this. Psalms 91, a couple of scriptures here. Psalm 91, do you have it? Now, I might have to release some angels to keep y'all up woke. <laughs> Just pinch you every time you sleep. <laughs> Psalm 91, and look at here, look what it says here. Because, verse 9, because thou hast made the Lord, which is thy refuge, thy most high habitation. Look what happened. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh my dwelling. Why? For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. For 18 years of this ministry, I never closed the service out this scripture. Some people don't even know what I'm doing at the end. No evil shall befall us, neither shall any plague come near our dwelling. But he's given his angels charge over us to keep us in all of our way. What are you doing? You're releasing the angels to keep you to the next Sunday. Lord have mercy. Amen. And look what it says, what it says in Amphi Bible says. It says, For he shall give his angel a special charge over you to accompany, to defend, to preserve in all your ways of obedience and service. In other words, a special charge. That means extra. He's going to give you extra, just extra, extra charge over you to accompany you, to defend you, to preserve you. That's what angels are doing. Angels are accompanying you, defending you, preserving you. Say amen to that. Amen. It says angels are 
write this down, creative beings. They're ministering spirits. The servants of God that execute the will of God. Amen. They're God's servant agents. So God has angels ready to assist us if you believe. Now, here's, here's, here's what the issue the Lord told me. He said, you cannot provoke your angel. When you provoke your angel, that's when you hinder the angels. So we need to, I need to show you that. I need to, because I, I don't want anybody to be here and provoking their angels. Look at Exodus, Old Testament, Exodus 23. Look at this for a minute. I told her, I don't know, people in the meeting we had, um, get me a clock. Anybody got one, so I'm just going to get the preachers. Don't, 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 don't. I don't even got no clock. I don't even know what time it is. I don't know what time I started. Nobody ain't got no one yet. Anybody know what time I started? Ain't nobody asking now. Shut up. <laughs> Exodus 23, look at this. I won't be long. Look at here. This is so very vital here. Behold, I send the angels, look here, before thee, to keep thee. Do y'all have it? Exodus 23, 20. Exodus 23. Exodus 23 and 20. This, this is very vital about if you're going to even believe God to do something in your life. Because what if you're believing God for something and yet you'll keep believing wrong and saying the wrong thing. And so the angel that's called to help you can't help you because you provoked them. Look what it says here. Behold, the angel, uh, I'll send an angel before thee to keep thee in thy way, to bring thee in the place which I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice. Look what it said. Provoke him not. For he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. In other words, now in the New Testament, Jesus has pardoned our, all of our transgressions. But what, what this is saying is, if you miss it and start saying things that you ain't supposed to say, or doing things you ain't supposed to do, or, or believe in a certain way, when you don't believe the word, and you say things negative. Because look here, look what it says. But if thou shalt indeed obey my voice, and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy to your, thy enemies and an adversary unto thy adversaries. In other words, if you don't provoke your angels, I'll, any enemy that come against you, I'm going to come against them. Any adversary that come against you, I'm going to become an adversary to them. You don't have to fight your battles. I'll fight them. I just don't need you to provoke your angel. Once you provoke your angel, I can't help you. Even though you have all those angels, think about that. If you provoke them, they can't help you. Man, somebody said, is that, is that real? Okay, out of two or three witnesses, let the word be established. Look at Luke 1 and 18. Look at Luke 1, 18. Glory to God. Luke 1 and 18. Luke 1 and what? Amen. Look at somebody that said, don't provoke your angels. Don't We're going to release them in a minute, but we got to make sure that when you leave here, you won't be talking crazy. Amen. Amen. You remember Zacharias, Elizabeth's husband, when they showed up and said, you're going to have a child? Look what, what happened. Look, look what happened. Look what happened in, in, in verse 18. And Zechariah said unto the angel, see, the angel showed up and told him something, whereby shall, shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is stricken in years. In other words, in the natural, it don't make sense. You're giving me a word, but it don't make sense in the natural, so now I'm going to say something negative against that, and I'm not going to believe it. If you don't believe it, uh, and you say something negative, you are provoking your angel. And look what happened. Look what happened. And the angel answered and said unto him, I am Gable. 
that stand in the presence of God, and I'm sent to speak unto thee and to show thee these glad tidings, and behold, thou shalt be dumb and shall not be able to speak until the day that these things be performed, because thou believest not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. In other words, it's so important that I have this boy be born. I can't have you, I can't have you to even take a chance to leave your mouth open. I'm going to shut your mouth for nine months, and then after the baby comes, then I open it up. But for nine months, you won't be able to say nothing negative. That's how powerful I need you to know you can't talk negative because you can hinder John from coming. So God said, John and Jesus, in this time of coming to redemption is so important, I got to go ahead and close your mouth up because you couldn't hinder it. Why would he close his mouth up if he couldn't? He closed his mouth up because he was provoking the angel when he didn't believe the word. If you don't believe the word, even though your angels are signing you, they can't do nothing because you said, I don't believe. God bless you. I hope you enjoyed today's broadcast. I'm praying that the word was such a blessing to you and that you begin to apply the word to your life so it can change and rearrange things in your life for the good. If you have never received Jesus as your personal savior, um, this is the perfect time to do that. You know, we are saved by grace through faith. It's unearned, undeserved favor. Just believing on Jesus. So if you'd like to receive him, oh, what a wonderful day to receive the Lord. Romans 10 and 9 says, you'll confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. So just repeat after me, lift your hands and say, Lord Jesus, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. I believe that you died for me to set me free. Forgive me, come on, repeat it, for all of my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I've done wrong right now. I change lordships. I make Jesus Lord and Savior of my life. Therefore, I am saved. God bless you. Welcome to the family of God. If you made that confession, um, please email us, write us, let us know so we can send you some free literature to help you in your Christian walk. We love you, and most of all, Jesus loves you. See you soon.